some surprises in yesterday's primaries, including a big upset in New York State. Former Bernie Sanders campaign organizer Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez defeated high-ranking Democrat Joe Crowley, who some thought might challenge for the uh, leadership of the Democratic wing in the House. So how will this impact business and the potential ba pa balance of power in Congress? With us is Ben White, chief economic correspondent for Political and, Politico and also a CNBC contributor. Ben, it feels to me like it was a good, good evening for the extremes. Mm. In other words, the GOP candidates who Mr. Trump backed against more moderate candidates tended to do well, and the left-leaning candidates on the Democratic side seemed to knock out the more moderates there. Indeed. Well, you do see the continued polarization of the American electorate, but particularly in the Democratic Party, the energy is clearly on the left. It's clearly among younger candidates, among female candidates, among candidates who support Medicare for all, free college tuition. Uh, Casio Cortez essentially ran on the Bernie Sanders platform. But I think it's also important not to overstate the extent to which this is indicative of a leftward shift in the Democratic Party. This is a district in the Bronx and Queens that is incredibly progressive. It's 50 percent Hispanic. Joe Crowley uh, did not match that district particularly well. So, yes, the Democratic Party is moving to the left, becoming more progressive. That's where the energy is. But let's not extrapolate one district in Bronx and Queens to a countrywide far left uh, move of the Democratic Party. What is it presage for the fall? I think it presages for the fall that uh, if Democrats are to re retake the House, which they may well do, there's still numbers in their favor, they're still looking pretty good, they're going to do it with candidates like Ocasio-Cortez, uh, who are uh, female, who are younger, who are energetic and support many of these progressive causes. And if they do that and retake the House, you can say goodbye to a lot of President Trump's uh, aggressive moves on tax cuts, on deregulation. So if you're in business, if you're watching this from a financial perspective, it means a Democratic House is going to be more liberal, uh, is going to be more inclined to block the president and talk about impeachment more. So it will be a more left-leaning Democratic House so should they win. Basically, moderates are not going to have a good time in the, in the midterms it's here. Harder and that's going to be, gonna make it harder to get some sort of yes. consensus. They're, they'll be harder to have consensus in Washington in that period between 2018 and 2020. And you'll see the Dems moving left towards 2020. They'll want somebody who's more to these positions uh, on the issues. Moderates will have a harder time. But I don't think it doesn't mean in districts that are more moderate in swing states that Democrats aren't nominating more moderate candidates. They're really trying to fit the district. In this case, the district fits a very progressive candidate. In some others, it doesn't. Does, what, 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 is, what, is the, what do the numbers say right now about the odds that the Democrat. Not that we should believe the polls. For yeah, right. Sakes. We've had some problems. Uh, we've with had that. some problems when we. What are the what are the what are the polls? What are the odds say about the Democrats taking the House yeah, or the Senate? Yeah, it's narrowed somewhat for Democrats in the House as President Trump's approval rating has ticked up a little bit, and there is energy on the Republican side too. When you think about what the president is doing on trade and on immigration, a lot of that is aimed at energizing the Republican electorate, and it's working to do that. It doesn't necessarily mean that there won't be dislocations on trade and in the markets uh, that could be negatives for him, but Republicans are fired up to the point that they haven't been since 1994 in the midterm. So that's working, which could limit Democratic gains. They still have a good map in front of them in the House. If everything falls right and the energy is there, they could retake the House. But it's not as much of an advantage as you might have thought a couple of months ago. I mean, the Republicans have one major edge right now, and that is the economy yeah. is, is doing very strong. Do, do the Democrats have any coherent economic message? Well, I think they do. I think their message is still on wages. Yes, they're going up. They're not going up enough. But their message, whether they like to admit it or not, is very much an anti-Donald Trump message. It is uh, you people, Democrats, do not like what the president is doing. And if you look at ballot questions among Democrats on do you want to see a Congress that's a check on the president? A lot of people are saying yes to that question. So they're, benef they're banking on the fact that the electorate in House races is going to say, we want somebody to check the president's power, and that'll drive them to wins in the midterms. But you're right, economic growth of you know maybe 4% in the second quarter, plus tax cuts kicking in, that's good for Republicans. But Trump is not really running on that. He's running on immigration, trade, aggressive stuff that may be not so great for the economy. Quick thought on this decision this morning out of SCOTUS on unions. On the face of it, it would it would appear to damage unions because they... And, and, and the funds that unions typically put yep. into Democratic races. On the other hand, it could well energize them. Yes, I, I think that's absolutely true. You'll see Democrats saying this is an attack on organized labor in America. Republicans stole the Supreme Court seat from us. This should have been Merrick Garland. He might not have voted this way. 
Republicans got Gorsuch in this seat guaranteeing a 5-4 ruling. It will energize Democrats in that regard. But it is, it's a nationwide trend in right-to-work states and the private sector and now in the public sector that you just can't compulsorily collect these fees. That's a blow to what organized labor can spend, how much they can raise. But I think the larger point is, yes, mm -hmm. it will energize Democrats to say, you got to elect us because these people are trying to kill organized labor. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.